We hope you enjoyed the break. For our second keynote of the day, I am honored to welcome Mr. Pagano, the CEO of the Red Sea Development Company and Amala. If you don't already know, Amala and TRSDC are sister projects on the northern coast of Saudi Arabia, enabling the Vision 2030. Aside from that, Mr. Pagano has delivered many multi-billion dollar developments, which I think we can all agree is quite impressive. Please do not forget to submit any questions that you might have before our Q&A. But for now, we have a video from the Red Sea Development Company. We are breaking new ground. We're thinking differently. Sustainability is no longer enough. As David Attenborough so rightly mentioned in his latest film, we're moving from being apart from nature to becoming a part of nature once again. <laughs> For us at the Red Sea Development Company, nature is our most valuable asset and our greatest inspiration. The Red Sea Project is located between Al Waj and Umluj on the west coast of Saudi Arabia, in an area comprising a pristine archipelago of 90 islands, teeming with coral and sea life spectacular mountains, rolling dunes, and even dormant volcanoes. And to date, we've awarded key contracts to partners who share our vision. Our hub islands continue to build momentum, created in partnership with some of the world's leading architects and designers. Connecting all these locations are the newly completed roads, jetties, and causeways. And work on a new international airport, designed by the award-winning architect Foster & Partners, is well underway. The number of workers busy on site is growing by the day. Housed in a new construction village, providing the highest quality accommodation, healthcare, and sports facilities. The construction of our coastal village is progressing well. Eventually, this will be home to 14,000 people who will work at the destination. Upskilling young Saudi talent is also our priority. Conservation is a must. Sustainability, a step in the right direction. But the new frontier for tourism is regeneration. Carbon neutral regenerative development is at the heart of our ambition. This is what the Red Sea Development Company is all about. Thank you for that video, Mr. Pagano. We're so excited to hear what you have to say today. How are you feeling today, sir? I'm terrific, and uh, thank you for the kind introduction, and I hope that you all enjoyed that uh, video showcasing the beauty of the Red Sea. Obviously, it's an honor for me to be here with you today. Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne, which is now known as EHL Hospitality Business School, is renowned and respected as a world leader. And it's one of the Red Sea Development Company's most prestigious and valued partnerships. Now, together, we've teamed up with uh, the University of Prince Megrin right here in Saudi Arabia to offer scholarships to 120 hospitality undergraduates who are now in the third year of their studies. And we've created this partnership with the hope that the bright young women and men who graduate this program will bring the very best of Swiss and Saudi hospitality to our luxury tourism destinations on the Red Sea coast. And today, students from top hospitality schools from around the globe are taking part in this conversation about the promises and the challenges that we face in the hospitality sector. Now, it means a lot for me to speak with you today. Now, as chief executive officer of a real estate development company that's creating two transformative hospitality destinations in Saudi Arabia, my work focuses on using these flagship projects as a platform to shape the future of tourism. Now, tourism has historically had both positive and negative effects on the environment and local communities. On the one hand, 
Overtourism has created challenges for local ecosystems and sometimes the quality of life for its residents. On the other hand, the rise of ecotourism and increased access to previously inaccessible destinations has raised awareness of environmental challenges and the importance of protecting our natural capital. It has also brought opportunities for prosperity to more people around the world. Now, the pandemic and social isolation of the last two years has also created huge pent up demand for travel. But people's expectations have changed. They expect the brands and companies that they support and the places they visit to align with their values. They want their travel dollars to do good. They want to support companies that are inclusive. They want to support local businesses and importantly, local communities. 83% of global travelers say sustainability is now vital. And the Red Sea Development Company is committed to meeting and indeed exceeding these expectations. Sustainability means not making a mess of things or leaving the place as you found it. But we're of the firm view that sustainability is no longer enough. We need to move towards regeneration. We must leave our world better than how we found it. As the environmentalist Paul Hawken puts it, regeneration is what we do as living beings, as a species of life on the planet. We regenerate ourselves by taking in air, water, and food. We care for our children. We do it even with our pets and our gardens. We care for others. But after years of extraction and exploitation, he argues, it's time to regenerate our planet. Regeneration means bringing the earth back to life, he says. And, you know, and I totally agree. Regeneration is not only my goal, but it's also my passion. But the fact is, today's tourism industry is one of the earth's biggest polluters, creating an estimated 8% of global carbon emissions. But while tourism contributes to the problem, the industry can and must also be part of the solution. And I think it's an enormous opportunity, not only to change our ways, but to lead the way, to lead the world, in fact. Tourism can be a beacon of innovation and regeneration. And every single one of you can play an important role in helping to heal our planet protecting our fragile ecosystems and supporting our local cultures. Our world is quite literally in your hands. So let me take you on a journey to a place where the climate is temperate year round. The destination is less than eight hours away from 85% of the world's population. And it's vast, about the size of Belgium. The sweeping desert dunes are inhabited by camels and Arabian oryx. The majestic mountains home to rare birds. And its beautiful turquoise blue waters and stunning archipelago of 90 pristine islands are bursting with life and thriving coral reefs. This is the Red Sea Project, a luxury regenerative travel destination celebrating the natural environment and delivering the most exquisite barefoot luxury experiences. Further up the coast is Amala, another world-class tourism destination focused on well-being, the arts, and nature. A community and a lifestyle which will set a standard for transformative experiences. Together, these destinations, when complete, will deliver 80 hotels with over 11,000 hotel rooms thousands of resi luxury residential units, marine research facilities, cultural assets, marinas, golf courses, state-of-the-art leisure facilities, and an international eco-friendly airport. They will create 120,000 new jobs and add around $10 billion to Saudi's GDP, helping to diversify the economy and lessen its dependence upon oil. Now, these destinations are breathtaking. Indeed, I'd say groundbreaking, completely powered by renewable, 
clean energy 24 hours a day, seven days per week, on a scale never attempted before anywhere in the world. We will send zero waste to landfill and will be net zero day one with an ambition to become carbon negative in time. Now I'm excited about creating a whole new luxury hospitality industry in this beautiful and unique country. I'm excited about pioneering the most ambitious regenerative travel destinations in the world today. Not, not only does tourism foster understanding and admiration between people, cultures, and nations, tourism is responsible for one in 10 jobs worldwide. And pre-pandemic, tourism contributed over 10% of global GDP. Now the Red Sea and Amala are key enablers of Vision 2030 and the kingdoms in economic diversification. It's a transformative economic and social reform blueprint that is opening up the country to the world. Now this blueprint centers on driving growth, creating jobs, and importantly, building bridges between cultures. It centers on a strong and thriving Saudi Arabia that provides opportunity for all and welcoming individuals from across the globe to become a force for good in the region. Now, I believe that the opportunities the kingdom provides are unmatched by any market in the world today. We've got the biggest hotel names already on board, all of which I'm sure you'll be familiar with. We have St. Regis, Six Senses, Fairmont, Jumeirah, SLS, and many, many more. Today, these hotels are rising from the desert, from the mountains, from the islands, and from the coast of the Red Sea. And our first guests will be welcomed as soon as the end of this year. Now, everyone who works at the Red Sea Development Company is committed to driving change. Because a job with us isn't just a job. It's a way of living. The talented people from around the world who join us live and breathe our ethos because they share our beliefs and they share our values. They find meaning and purpose in what we're trying to achieve. And it's not just for us, but for the future. Because when we talk about the jobs that are going to impact our planet, it's not just the ones you would think of first. It's not just the engineer making electric cars or the lab scientist producing plant-based foods or even the technician installing solar panels. It's the professionals who day in and day out are on the ground serving others. The future leaders like yourselves who will take best practice and make it even better because ultimately nothing stands still. Whether you're behind the scenes or front of house, you can be a pioneer. Regeneration is down to your generation. Now, I truly believe that tourism can lead the way. And as future leaders of this industry, there's a part for every single one of you to play. I know this because many of my own team members, including some of our most senior leaders, are alumni of EHL. And we're sitting exactly where you are, not so very long ago. And to the people from the many wonderful and prestigious institutions that are joining us here online, let me wish you all the very best of luck with your summit and with your future studies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pagano. We have a few questions from you from our audience and our delegates. First. Okay. How can we, as we look for a company to work for, differentiate companies who truly believe and act according to ESG principles amongst other who seem to be greenwashing? That's a good question. Well, I, that's a very good question. And I, I think you know, words, words are cheap. Um, actions speak much, much louder. Um, what I would encourage somebody to do if they want to come and work for the Red Sea Company is come and see what we're doing right here on the ground. I think I mentioned it in my, in my presentation. We are going to be the biggest tourism destinations in the world powered by renewable energy 24 hours a day. And we're going to do this completely off grid. 
Um, and not because it's easy, but because it actually shows the, the rest of the world that we have to take a different approach to that which we've been taking up until now. And it costs a little bit more money, but I believe that the consumers will pay that little bit more to come to a destination that is actually taking all the necessary steps to protect the environment. And that's just one of many different initiatives that we're undertaking here at the Red Sea. We're very much committed to working with our local communities, to upskilling young Saudis. Again, we've, you know, we've touched on briefly the, you know, our students that are studying at, uh, at uh, UPM, which are obviously uh, an, an accredited program. But we're also spending enormous amounts of effort and energy in upskilling Saudis across all of the different skill sets that we're going to need to ultimately bring our destinations to life. But I would encourage you to come and look at our, go read our sustainability report, which we publish online. I think that's another great way to sort of learn of the different things that we're doing. And we're doing it on a transparent basis so that people can actually judge for themselves our commitment to our ESG principles. Thank Excellent. you, Mr. Picano. Thank you very much. Our next question is, your elite graduate program states that it is for Saudi graduates only. Are European graduates also allowed to apply? Well, look, the, the elite graduate program is, is specifically targeting young Saudis. So, and it's, it's to come and work within the organization, but we're open to other, other countries, you know, other students from other parts of the world joining us, but I think more so in the hospitality space. The, the elite graduate program is very much targeted at upskilling them in the real estate business and helping us deliver the vision of, uh, of the country, which is vision 2030. Excellent, thank you very much, Sam. So we have another question for you, sir. What are some of the sustainable practices in the Red Sea project that can easily be applied to other projects? Well, of course, the, the, you know, the first, first and foremost, let's, let's avoid single-use plastics. I mean, I think that's, I think that's easy. Um, but then it's, it's principles across the whole of the, the industry inside the hotels. You know, it, it's, again, many, many, many initiatives that are already being undertaken by many of the uh, hospitality companies. Um, and so we should all do that as a matter a matter of course. I think the bigger the bigger question is what can we do as an industry to drive, you know, bigger change. I mean, I, I and I and I use the example of of what what I described earlier about power, but also in terms of you know, looking at our whole supply chain. How do we minimize transport? You know, doing localizing things is is an important way to do things. So growing our own produce on site to minimize transport. Um, you know, building differently is another way that uh, I think we can do things to support uh, sustainability. And as I said, you know, in, in my presentation, I'm, I'm more about regeneration. Um, so there are many, many different things that we can do. Cons you know, conserve water, another, another example. Um, so again, the list is quite, quite broad and long. Thank you, Mr. Pagano. Thank you very much. So our next question is, sustainability has been in trend lists for hospitality industry for years. However, many say it is not a trend anymore, but a must, that hotels that are not sustainable will not survive. What is your view on this, sir? I absolutely agree. I think, um, you know, I think we, we started off on our journey on the Red Sea with sustainability at the very heart of everything that we do. And as I've said before, we're no, long, we're, we're no longer of the view that sustainability is enough. You know, we need to do and go beyond, beyond that. Um, people and consumers, you know, their patterns and, their, and what they were looking for when they travel was changing well before the pandemic hit us. Um, post pandemic, I think that's brought it into much sharper focus. And so I think if you don't embrace sustainability and indeed go beyond sustainability, I think you're going to be left behind because I think you know consumers are making choices with their with their wallets and are going to choose places that are respectful of the environment and value the natural capital. Um, so I think uh, you know if you stay in your current mode of operation, you're going to you're going to fail. Thank you very much, Mr. Pergano. We have another question for you. As the Earth continues to get warmer and warmer. Do you think Saudi Arabia can remain a viable country to live in? Look, I, I, I do. I do because I believe that the climate crisis has finally awake, awoken, awoken the entire world. I think COP26 was very successful. 
I think countries have now come to realize that it's no longer enough to just talk about doing things, but now it's the, now is the time to act. I think Saudi Arabia as a as a country is taking those those steps um, in a very uh, significant way. They've committed themselves to going carbon uh, net zero by 2060, but more importantly, by 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 2030, 50 percent of their power generation is all going to be generated from renewable sources, and and. Projects like ourselves are taking, you know, leading roles not only in the in the region and in the kingdom, but also looking to set the benchmark for the world as a whole. Um, so I do hope that, you know, that we're all springing into action, and it's not just about Saudi Arabia because there's many other parts of the world that are also going to be affected. Um, that you know, if we don't act, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Saudi Arabia or anywhere else. We won't have a planet to live on. Absolutely. Another question. People who spend more money on luxury tourism seem to not care so much about their carbon footprint. How are you planning on attracting and changing this mindset of these people? Well, look, we're creating a destination that um, certainly seeks to attract the luxury traveler, but we're going to take a, we're going to force them to, <laughs> to to embrace the concept of reducing their carbon footprint. As I said in my, as my in my presentation, that we're going to be net zero day one. And indeed, we want to go beyond net zero. So we're going to sequester carbon through a combination of technological means and nature-based solutions in order that we will allow people to come guilt-free. So we will sequester their carbon. And I think through you know, exposure to a place like the Red Sea where we're, you know, as a developer, we're putting the environment ahead of profit, I think that'll start to change consumers' minds and hopefully the luxury traveler along with it. Thank you very much. Mr. Bergano, we have one last question for you. How can we convince others okay. and motivate others to also care about sustainability and prepare for the future? Well, like I said, as, as I said before, I'm using the Red Sea and the Mala projects and uh, the many others that we're going to be undertaking as literally a platform to, to help, help drive change toward regenerative development. Um, and I think that as, you know, as, as more and more people take those more difficult steps and actually show that you can do it in a different way, I think we're going to put pressure on others. And I think ultimately, what's going to drive change is going to be the consumer. If the consumer embraces what we're doing and embraces and values you know, the environment and, and sustainability, then others will be forced to follow. We're just simply showcasing and hoping to lead the way in the transition towards regenerative development by actions, by, by really doing things and not just simply talking about it. And, and once we're open and people come to realize that we've delivered on all our promises, I think the consumer will support us at the expense of others. And so others will be forced to make change, otherwise they'll fail as businesses. Mr. Bergano, thank you very much for your answers to those questions. They were extremely helpful. We would like to ask you if you would like to say any last words to wrap up your presentation. Well, look, I think you know, what I'd like to finish on is, is now is the time to act. We have to act as a world to, to, to reverse the trend, the pattern that we've uh, been following for so long. I think you, as the future leaders of this industry, um, you know, have a significant role to play. Embrace it. You have the world ahead of you. You can help shape it. I mean, we may have caused all the issues that you're going to have to deal with, but we're starting to correct our ways, and we hope that we give you the opportunities to help guide this, this country, this country, this planet, this world in a different and a better direction. So good luck with everything that you're doing, and uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for that excellent keynote. Personally, I love that you were talking mostly about sustainability and not only sustainability, but also regenerating. I don't think that's something you hear too much about yet. And I think that's going to be a trend starting with the Red Sea Development Company. So thank you very much, Mr. Pagano. Thank you.